Cool. This is great. So, thanks for nice hanging out with me. Absolutely. Pleasure's all mine. Pleasure's all mine. Uh -huh. This is the first time I've done anything like this for the site, so it's really cool uh, to be able to reach yeah. out to you. Uh, yeah, so I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about the artwork. I am part mm -hmm. of a community that you've probably become a little bit aware of since doing the artwork, uh, playing <laughs> chivalry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we'd like to get together and cut off each other's heads. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what's start. your beginnings with them? How did you get kind of introduced to the, the Torn Banner? Um, I guess it's sort of kind of uh, evolved from the modding community. Um, when I was in high school, in tail end of high school, before I went to college, I kind of like um, spent my time working with all the all sorts of different projects or mods. And uh, at that time, I was just mainly doing concept art. And uh, and during my college years, I studied animation, so that I kind of like um, doing both animation and concept art nowadays. Yeah, and I think I met um, with Tom Banner. It, it didn't. It wasn't Tom Banner when I was first with the mod team, and it sort of evolved. Um, I was with the community that was um, working on Age of Chivalry uh, for a long time uh, yeah. in the original mod, and um, and I left for a while due to work and uh, real life commitments and. Uh, I came back uh, towards the early phase of the chivalry development where we actually decided to make the uh, mod into a full-fledged game. So yeah, oh, and yeah, so you were there at the birth of it all. Um, I was fairly. Uh, I was there with. I was one of the few people who was still, the, uh, you know, came from the original mod team. Um, but yeah, the team has evolved a lot uh, during uh -huh. the years. I've seen, you know, a lot of changes. But that, I guess, that's all part of the growing process. Sure. Well, it seems like the art you were doing kind of just fit in with what they had in mind. I mean, uh, you didn't start drawing medieval. Well, not that you not in what I can see in your in your work. Uh, one theme that it comes back is uh, violence. <laughs> At least that's what I see on Deviant Art. I don't know if you have other yeah. stuff outside of it, but all the stuff on Deviant Art that I've been able to see, it's not just the medieval. Uh, yeah. You go into the past with the. Uh, Wild West, <laughs> going to the future with this like modern looking, maybe Call of Duty looking guy, but he's uh, yeah. he's got something about the old ways to him. But one <laughs> thing that uh, keeps coming up is this overarching theme of violence. I guess it's grittiness and uh, realist realism. I'm kind of um, uh, whatever artwork I do, I kind of try to ground it onto a believable reality in a sense. Like, um, you know, when you see a warrior or a knight, you don't see him just in polished shiny armor because a knight is essentially a soldier on the battlefield who, you know, fight with the, uh, you know, like um, all sorts of uh, violent tools and. Uh, you know, people get sweaty, people have blood stain on them after a battle. So, like, the way I portray usually characters, try to ground them into sort of believable uh, reality in a sense. So when you see a soldier, everything they wear, uh, or a knight, their costume, or even though it might not be 100% historically correct, it's grounded upon, like, uh, you know, like a believable functional tool. So, yeah, I, I was influenced a lot by the design principle they use for Lord of Rings and uh, when they try to build a world um, yeah and also I was a fanatic fan of medieval <laughs> yeah, armor and knights and so I, I study a lot of it and I looked over um, I learned a lot about the armory how the armor was made and all sorts of stuff so that sort of came in vain yeah, yeah. well um, there's some interesting women in the world too <laughs> so yeah, yeah. sometimes uh, when I was scanning through there again this is just on the deviant art so if that's not a, a, a full representation of your work uh, sorry if I'm making assumptions but um, okay. the women usually find themselves in more passive situations like there's one called eye of the storm mm -hmm. I think that's like the only drawing I've seen you do or painting um, where there's no weapons Oh yeah, yeah. No, I actually had a nickname during college. Yeah, all my friends see me drawing battle scene all the time, so they just nickname me battle scene all the time. But um, I do, I do draw other things. It's, I guess, it's a part of growing up too. Because when I was younger, I kind of was just really heavily influenced by, uh, or passionate about all this medieval battles and you know sci-fi movies. 
Um, so I tend to draw a lot of that, but I haven't been updating too much of my artwork recently because I've been, in the last couple of years, very heavily focused on the animation production as well as I, in my free time I do some of my work. But I'm definitely, in the recent years, I'm starting to explore more the alternative non-violence orientated thing. Uh -huh. But, you know, it is what I was originally passionate about and that's what I'm good at drawing you know, about battle scene. So, um, yeah, I think at core, I'll still enjoy do that type of artwork in general. What about what's going on with the uh, the Joan of Arc? For some reason, that is marked as a not safe for work graphic on the Deviant Art, <laughs> and yet yeah. she's not holding the weapon. At that point, she's dropped the weapon. It's almost mm -hmm. in a submissive. Again, like a submissive woman type role. I mean, just, I, you can make assumptions that maybe she's responsible for slaying all those, but I just thought it was interesting that out of all of them that you have, all the bloody pictures, the one of Joan of Arc gets censored for some reason by DeviantArt. Uh, do you know? Oh, that? really? You didn't know? I that? didn't even know it was censored. But um, yes, fair enough. Not, I, I can understand that. Um, I've experienced different when I was doing games for video art um, and like the cover up for Shivery we went through several development the first phase I did it uh, didn't get proof by um, because it was actually in, like there was a uh, blood coming out of uh, um, the, the, the knife getting stabbed officially was uh, been the stabbed. but then you know because the censorship stuff so we had to make it so he was not actually stabbed at that time, so as long as the implying violence was there, <laughs> it was okay. But um, in terms of this uh, this John of Art work, it was more like, because um, historically I studied a little bit about her history, and there's a lot of debate on whether, you know, she was just a figure to inspire the troops, or was she actually on the field fighting with the troops? So there was a lot of um, um, unknown area too, and. Uh, uh, so I kind of, uh, the painting I try to portray in a sense that she may have partaked in the battle, sure. but her role on the part of the history is more of an inspiration in a sense, but whether she truly feel justified of what she did is, I don't know, that's kind of the area I like to explore about the you know human factor in this type of history um, Yeah, stories. that's kind of what I got too. There was some amb ambiguity. Like, mm -hmm. uh, it, uh, is there blood on her hands? Is she responsible mm -hmm. for what's going on in the scene behind her? So, yeah, I thought that was inf interesting. Mm -hmm. What about guys like uh, some influences? Uh, Frazetta comes to mind. Oil paintings of Frazetta, are you familiar with him? Um, yeah, yeah, I, I'm starting to grow a little bit towards that area. Originally, I was heavily influenced by, you know, fantasy, traditional fantasy art, like Dungeons and Dragons type of stuff. But then, you know, um, I start to drawn away from completely realistic or uh, also there's basically when I looked at a lot of video game influence art, there's some very um, World of Warcraft style and Diablo style, uh, very fantasy, very exaggerated. Right. Uh, uh, then there is, a, a, you know, a lot of, uh, yeah, um, I, I kind of try to veer myself into a direction of my own kind of thing. Uh, I try to keep things grounded a little bit more uh, realistic, like, um, yeah, so kind of like, yeah, just uh, I just enjoy the style, the um, slightly stylized, but not too far away from realism. Yeah. You had mentioned Diablo. Uh, I, I just remember <laughs> having Diablo one. I don't I don't know if you had that one, but I'm sure they were all yeah. similar. But um, looking through that instruction book that would come with it, and it had all the pencil sketches. This is what it kind of looked yeah. like of like ancient ruins and relics, wizardry and stuff like that. I thought that was the coolest thing growing up. Like it was yeah, mysterious, yeah. right? Yeah, no, I enjoy Diablo One's art style a lot, but I think they evolve a lot uh, during the years as well. Especially the latest one is a lot more um, stylized in the cartoon style too. So we talked, we talked a little bit about how your artwork has went through different decades and generations of warfare. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have any opinion on maybe which generation is the most violent, the most bloody? Uh, you know, I'm looking right now at this this armored future. It kind of looks like a guy that could be in the future. And now I'm uh -huh. looking at the mech. That looks like it's, it could get pretty crazy in the future. But mm -hmm. 
you take somebody like Genghis Khan. Uh, I think there's a different level of violence being applied in different era. I, I don't think you can really say the modern era is less violent because the weapons we make is much more destructive. It's just less personal because it's not usually like the person, yeah. like for a soldier, it's more pushing the trigger a lot of time rather than pushing in medieval era. I think in the, in the ancient to medieval era where the, the like warfare is a lot more up close personal, that's kind of the difference between chivalry and uh, first person shooter is, is the yes. game because, because that's why we capture the up close personal thing. The violence is always there. I don't think you can say a shooter game has less violence when you're exploding people's head with a gun or, you know, vape crack or the laser beam. So um, I think it's just the how close you get up to it. That's what's small. Uh, different, I think. And also there's a lot of actual brutality because the way people treat with each other is less, you know, regulated compared to nowadays. They didn't have like the war, Geneva war uh, regulations and stuff like that. Yeah, people no. didn't abide by the same rules and they, the life was a lot more violent in those days. So no doubt. Yeah, it's hard to say. <laughs> um, what's next for you? Do you plan on pursuing any other video game, like being involved in the video game uh, art directions of like, are you still hanging out with Torn Banner guys? Yeah, I'm still a full time uh, member in Torn Banners, and uh, we are working, um, you know, on our uh, projects and stuff like that. I can't really say anything yet. Sure, <laughs> the good. unannounced Unreal Four yeah. project. <laughs> yeah, as far as uh, everyone knows. <laughs> and you're sure you can't say anything about that? <laughs> no, 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 not not even that you're doing the art concept art though for that. Um, yeah, well, we're working as a team, yeah, you know, of as always. Um, so that leads me to believe there will be violence. Um, uh, as far as I say, it is a very <laughs> integral part of uh, our um, design culture, I guess, <laughs> in, the, in the game. Like, we all enjoy um, chivalry style of uh, humor and violence combined. The humor is a huge part of it. Well, uh, again, my name is Sleepy. That's my call sign here. I do a website called LearnChivalry.com, and we're talking to Richard Yang, mm -hmm. concept artist at Torn Banner, responsible for uh, so much of the I iconic characters that we've come to know and love. I'm seeing people make um, little Lego toys of the Chivalry <laughs> guys. Uh, you know, a, a lot of comic strips have mm -hmm. popped up, and I was looking yeah, at Yeah, we really uh, love that. I was looking at your DeviantArt page, and it's just like when people contact you, and it's like, "Hey, can I use your picture as my avatar on this forum?" <laughs> you know, it's yeah. like, "Wow, that's kind of." I'm sure you were once that guy, you know, putting avatars yeah. on yeah. your, you know, forums. So. <laughs> uh, yeah, if you want to give out any plugs to your website or anything like that, I'd be happy to take them now. Um, that's fine. Um, I think did my. I haven't been updating much my personal website because uh, that's kind of my uh, drawing full time is less of a main thing for me. It's more of a hobby now. So I definitely do it regularly, but my primary position is the animator with Torn Banner. So I do a bit of both. I'm kind of, because we're a smaller studio, so I'm able to shift between two roles. Um, but yeah, the DeviantArt is more than uh, enough for me. Do you have uh, any. Uh animation up online right now or anything like that um no i actually uh that's something that maybe in the future i will uh update but all uh, right well let me know yeah. i'd be i'd be happy to get the word out there i'm sure we all want to see <laughs> thanks uh what you got in mind uh -huh. and with that said man i'll let you go and get back to work and all right really thank appreciate you very it. much it was fun all right see you richard okay See ya. All right, that was Richard Yang with Torn Banner. My name is Sleepy. Thanks for checking out the video. Be sure to check us out on LearnChivalry.com. You can also watch our streams at twitch.tv slash LearnChivalry.com, LearnChivalry.com. Please subscribe. We're going to have plenty more videos where that came from. Peace out, everybody. Woo! Absolutely not.